So I've been clearing this out a bit. Um, cut some of the, the weed and the, the grass is cut. Although most of the grass is dead already because it's autumn. Um, but now I'm able to actually walk down and walk into the house because there was a tree growing just right in front of the, uh, the door. There's a lot of birch here. So you can see a lot of birch all over the place. And I have to cut a few down because there's a lot of young ones, which are just one or two or three years old. Um, but if you do nothing here, it just becomes a forest again. Um, so it's nice to keep a few of the big ones standing and then cut the smaller ones. Well, that's the coffee. I remember when I came here um, for the first time, it was July and, um, and everything was like green and there was like a jungle here. You couldn't, you couldn't barely walk through here. Um, it's quite beautiful.
also you want to do a sort of, of light restoration. Nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Well, as we I was... We call light restoration because you, you do, you really don't touch a structure, you really don't touch a yes. anything no. so, so, I mean, so, so heavy. It's just well, it's, it's still a quis question because I was thinking to make this one bigger. Mm. But uh, Ask him. Mm. I, that, I that don't know about these walls, you know, because I was thinking it, 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 if you take this out, it's, it's a big that change. That structure here, uh, there is a big, uh, big, big paper to do oh, yeah. at the, the region of Piemonte because here we are a high seismic zone. Yeah. So need to make soft paper, uh, not cheap, uh, and uh, not cheap uh, work uh, to to do here because need uh, no, it's not possible uh, because the the, the, you, because the, the you, low because you you need a meter between the the corner of the wall and the door. And the oh. door. So this is uh, existent, uh, so no problem. But if you touch. Uh, you have to uh, to you stay under the law, yeah. and the law say that uh, from this is a uh, fifty fifty. So you need the uh, other fifty uh, of uh, wall. Okay. If you have no, you can't touch. Ma sarebbe bene fare un velux largo quanto due due no uno cioè non da interrompere i puntoni eh. Eh no ma no ma no no non facciamoci no no e così attaccano il telaio del velux ai puntoni 90 è la larghezza della finestra interna 65 you measure the inside or the outside of the window both or both both fuori e lo spessore del muro il fuori I just had a meeting with the geometra. Um, a geometra in Italy is um, a surveyor, which also does uh, architectural works. And you need to hire such a person to do, uh, if you do renovations or if you do a building project. Um, for So you will basically be the, the communication between the municipality for requesting building permits. Um, so he came here with his uh, engineer to do the measurements and and see what the quality of the of the walls and the roof and the entire building is. I've met with him a few times before, also before I bought it, and he, he is a nice guy. He speaks English, which is helpful for me because I don't speak Italian. Hmm. And. Um, <coughs> Yeah, it can be quite complicated with building rules and permits and all of the pa paperwork here in Italy. I've been reading up on it for a while now. Um, and I, I learned a lot by Googling in Italian because that will bring you to Italian blogs and then the Italian blogs I would translate in English. Uh, which is quite easy to do in browsers nowadays and then you'll get a lot more information than if you google all of these questions in English because you'll you'll stay in this circle of foreigners who want to buy a house in Italy um, so same on YouTube you know what I what I was looking for I, I, I put it in Italian and then you'll find Italian videos and then with captioning and auto translate you can you can educate yourself um, so it's a good way to do it and then um, and the geometry had a lot of information so we checked the building the walls are very strongly built they're all straight so they're good the beams are very good uh, quality the other ones are a little bit less but these ones are looking quite nice uh, but what needs to be replaced is the rafters because they are very thin uh, and everything is very heavy, you know, the roofing is heavy because these stones are they are so heavy and the, and the walls are heavy because they are like 50 centimeters thick um, so that's why there's five beams here instead of 
like on a normal modern house roof there would be one center beam carrying the roof together with the walls uh, but here there are five of these because it's all so heavy um, now for this I don't need a building permit because I will uh, keep the structure as it is but change just parts of the roof and not the structural parts uh, I'm not going to open any windows or extra doors because that's making it very costly and complicated um, so what this means is I don't have to request a building permit but something else then it needs to be uh, an official communication with the municipality um, but I can start the works already and I can also do the works myself because anything structural you're not allowed to do yourself on the house uh, in Italy um, and I don't want to work with building companies because it's going to cost a fortune to work here uh, so remotely you know when you speak with uh, people they say oh it's cheaper to they use a helicopter to bring them building materials here it's cheaper than normal do it with a car well it means it's it's less expensive because helicopter renting a helicopter for dropping off your your beams and your rafters is is very costly um, so that is actually also the reason why I, <coughs> I bought this particular cabin because I knew the walls were good and I knew what to do if you if you buy a ruin which is also possible and they're even cheaper uh, if you buy a ruin you have to completely renovate it like I mean you have to build it up from the ground up and, and that's that's costs a lot of money you know and the question if it's if it's worth it because real estate here in this region in particular is just I mean you can invest a lot of money in a beautiful house but it will never be worth it if you want to sell it so there's things to consider
Hey. Figure it out. Not yet. <laughs> it opens that way, isn't it? Inside. Like that. Hey. Lovely. Well, one of these good days in fall. Another beautiful day. Yeah. And they, they, they give us a few more of those. Yeah. Welcome to the southern side. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, another good view. Yeah, it's today we don't see that far, but uh, in the winter when it's clear, yeah, you see. Sometimes it almost looks like a sea because you get the fog yeah, and get yeah. like a clear line. There was actually this morning there was sort of a, a whitish, whitish line. Yeah. And you also get a, a, an actual uh, sea of clouds. Yeah. In November happens more because then it's colder down there. Right. And then it's you get this you 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 have a, a proper sea. Yeah. But once it comes in this valley, then at least I get get into it. it then it moves up because the the rock walls just I don't know the the air is just moving up. So. Right. Right. Nice. Anyway, uh, welcome to the Eremo Sant'Onofrio, it's called. Thank you. Beautiful. But then, so on the upstairs, I've already started doing it. It's difficult with this kind of rock because it's a bit pietra morta. Um, so I put the more classical uh, natural calcium stuff in, in the holes up there, wherever I could. And uh, only recently I found out that I could, with the flex, I could actually really do a good job in getting rid of the uh, the one which is in your drill right now. The, no, the one on the left because it has a diamond blade. It's, it's yeah. made for cutting rock. Yeah, yeah. But it it yeah, works really well it. also with this, except yeah. It's a that's Wait, what I like. That's what I like you about do, you, do, you do have doors. Yeah, but yeah. very old ones. Like the one house has a nice door, and he left another door for the other house. So I'm oh, building yeah. that. Oh, one. Okay, okay. And uh, regarding the stone, that's what I like about that place. It's it's kind of a clean slate. Yes, yes, They've yes. They've done nothing, so done you nothing. can do everything nicely. Yeah. For example, the grouting or right. the stones. And, and that this is sort of the, the rough thing, and sometimes even getting like covering over basically everything. <laughs> even though there was, you can see that with other houses sometimes around the doors they used to do something white, like cal uh, also with, with calcium because it, it keeps away pests, ants and stuff. They don't like okay, calcium, yeah. so so they sort of have a at the frame, yeah. The upper house shows it, but uh, yeah. And when I moved in, I sort of had this, I had this three-year window, and I had to do try to make it habitable in the first three months. So I didn't really pay attention to a lot of oh the details. Right. Yeah, you did things quick. And 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 did whatever I, I could, it, and then I figured I have to sell it again. But I'm yeah. still here. We're still here. Yeah. So this garden is literally more vertical than horizontal. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and but I really enjoy making these walls, and so over the last two years I've been putting them in because I figure, okay, if I can stay here longer, um, it's it's worth it. This is some experimenting. I put in an apricot with a lot of hope. I told you that. Yeah. I have the problem that February, March, because this is the slope and the sun is low. It hits it in a perfect angle so it warms up really quickly but then in april may i might have a late frost that destroys all the flowering maybe everything when did you plant it then this one i uh, planted this spring okay and so it actually this one really also grew uh grew larger there's a, a, a peach i used to have two peach trees but they were sick and they didn't make it but i ate peaches off it so i know they in theory can in good yeah. years grow. Well, it looks quite happy in yeah, its place. At the moment it hasn't done a winter yet. flowers. You planted those a while ago I think they, because they've been growing quite well. No, they, they, they this spring. This, this is spring, the, yeah. the problem is that they got so big that everything is laying down because they're actually three varieties and then I have this stuff that is just... Those, those are dying. This this is Cosmea. It's um, I love it because it's I, bumblebees are among my favorite animals and they do all the work here. Because the bees yeah. can't be bothered to get up here if there's nothing else. This actually is a, is a so so they this this will bloom until the first snow or the first frost. Um, whenever it gets really cold, then it, it it will die off. If it's not if it's just around zero, yeah. and it gets warm again, they come again because they just they keep on flowering. Now this is ah strawberries are they sweet? Well, they this is already 
It's been a while since I've sweet strawberries. Do you want? Sure, I want to try. It, this is not going to be super great because the season is over. Might have a little bit of acidity. Still acidity, good. But still good. Still better than the supermarket oh, strawberries, yes, which should taste like water. Yeah. But the mice have been here. <laughs> uh, two mice holes. So the salad has been decimated. Then I have like horseradish and rhubarb and stuff. It gets so hot in there that I have to leave the door open. All right. Because above 30 degrees, the plants are really feeding it. I mean, I would have paid for the three years. That's why I bought it. For the three years, I would have paid the same 20,000 in rent for a, a little cabin in the, in, in the woods. Not even yeah. the mountains, in the woods. Yeah. I would have paid 20,000 just in rent. In, uh, in Austria? In Austria. I mean, yeah. And yeah. Not, even, not even a view, nothing. I just looked, if so, like a, 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 a cabin of a, a hunter cabin or something, and I wouldn't be able to change anything. I, I have a, a little oratory, a little chapel. The rules are probably very strict, also. So it's um, halfway October now and it's already getting quite cold in the night. I've been sleeping in my tent and that helps a bit because it's a very small tent and it has um, two layers of fabric. So it keeps the warm, the body warmth in quite well. It's a tent I used on all my bike trips as well. But um, I mean it's annoying, you know, it's getting winter here. During the day, it's really, really wonderful to spend time here and work here. It's been quite sunny, actually. But when the sun sets a quarter to five behind the mountain there, it quickly gets really cold. And that's two minutes per day. It 
comes earlier and early, earlier. It gets gets dark quite quickly. And then during the evening, I'm just sitting here. I can't do much. And it gets so cold. So first I thought, okay, if I have the stove, if that is working, I'll just fire it up. And you know, there's holes in the windows. I mean, there's no window. Uh, it will be okay. But I was, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the table next to the stove. And then this side gets hot and the other side is still cold, you know, when you're sitting next to a campfire that your butt is always cold and the rest is warm. It's like that, you, you can't heat this place at all. Because all over the roof there's gaps in between the stones, so the wind comes through. There's gaps near the door, uh, the floor is open, there's just, you know, little um, holes in between the planks no window there's a lot of space it's just on top of the wall which are open so it's a lot of work to to make it water wind tight uh, i could do that but then the work on the roof is so much work because the stones are so heavy which are on the roof some of them are 100 or 200 kilos that's a few really big ones so that's for next year and i don't want to like do half work insulating this place and then to do it right next year. So, so I've been sleeping in the valley uh, the last days. I've rented a room, and um, and that that's perfect. So I work here until seven, six, and then I go down. I have a good night of sleep, and I come back in the morning here. That's better because the first week I slept here, and it was so cold. And I, I worked even in the evenings. I worked till 10 sometimes with my headlamp on just to stay warm, you know. But um, yeah, I, had, I didn't have time to, if I wanted to edit my videos, <laughs> it was getting so cold in here. Uh, it looks cozy. It's a cozy cabin, but a very cold, cozy cabin.